One of the companies that we've been working with uh, off and on for the past six years has been Rykarts and the Duck Farm, mm -hmm. and they've become personal friends. Uh, and then we have uh, our lamb now comes from a farm, Bellwether Farms, um, and it's a husband and wife, and their sons deliver. And so you get to be, the restaurant is a family restaurant, and the people who are delivering are um, also... Where are the Rykarts? The Rykarts are in uh, Petaluma, yeah. And then the um, Bellwether people? Uh, they're in um, Marin. Okay. And then we have uh, goat cheese that comes from Redwood Hill. They're up in Sebastopol. And then the full belly farm, which we get some of our vegetables from, is up near Sacramento, Guinda. Mm -hmm. And it's a group of, I think, four people who run the farm there. And Cindy, who's the, there's a dairy farm too. Um, the Stouse family farm mm -hmm. of West Marin, I think. Mm -hmm. This seems awfully romantic to me, the notion that one can still start some kind of farm or, or a food business and, and, and find a modest living. It's probably lots of hard work. <laughs> it's a modest living. They have to struggle and more of us need to support them. That's sort of why we were advertising and talking about it and having the dinners to just promote the idea that you need to go to your local farmer's market and find people to support delicious food manufactured by small farms versus ag agricultural. And you depend on this, Cindy. Do you have to forage yourself for ingredients? Do you spend any time doing that, or is that Francis? <laughs> I probably do most of that. I mean, some of them, uh, when I first started there, Haig already had uh, connections with some people, but lately they have approached us, and also there's an organization that um, are promoting these farmers in the Sonoma area, and so when they have somebody new coming on board, they tell us about them, and uh, we've now got it with Bellwether Farms, the lamb people, they also do sheep milk cheeses and they'll send me down new cheeses that they're making and for me to try and give them comments back mm -hmm. and it's you feel that you're you know and can trust the ingredients that you're getting mm -hmm. um, that they haven't been adulterated because you know the people and you learn you know you build up a relationship with them and uh, as I say it's nice to call up a, a company and talk to the person and then meet them when they come down to deliver it rather than calling, you know, a sales rep who might be there for six months or something and moves on. Well, it's also crucial. I know, now, Cindy, you've been um, in this restaurant business for a while. I'm sure you can remember when these people weren't around and when you probably had to wonder where you'll get certain ingredients from. Is that how the business is sometime week to week? You, you might present whatever's available or fresh or, or sometimes things come in that aren't up to par and you have to change or is this is what I've always thought happens in the restaurant business is that true we don't always get what we want actually we mm -hmm. always put that disclaimer in the flyer saying when available and sometimes we don't get the fish you want because the boats didn't go out and we buy such fresh ingredients we don't always get what we want so it's hard to put things too far advanced saying we'll be sure to get it but we, we try to buy what's in season, mm -hmm. which is also an important philosophy. And not, you can get almost anything any time of the year in California now. Right. But we still try to buy what's seasonal and represent the, the real flow of <laughs> what the earth is producing right now. Well, one